Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Roy on Rescue. We had an email come in that asked a very, very good question about what if we have a patient who has a, an open wound to the chest or is bleeding profusely like we might see in a gunshot wound, a stabbing wound. Um, it doesn't have to be an assault, though. It could have been that they fell on something, a sharp object, um, where it was impaled on a construction site by rebar. I've seen that on the road, actually, as a paramedic. Um, what do we do if they're in cardiac arrest and we need to provide CPR and they have a serious chest wound of sorts? This is a very, very simple question to answer, but a very important question to answer. We will still provide the same chest compressions we would if they did not have a chest wound because what we're talking about here is that a person is not breathing, they do not have a pulse, and they are dead, clinically. No breathing, no pulse, clinically dead. Fractures of the rib cage, punctured lungs, bruised heart, bleeding profusely from a chest wound has very little effect on the current bad status of this person. And so we will aggressively provide rescue breathing and CPR if they are in this cardiac arrest. Um, <clears throat> some people who have advanced training might say, yeah, but you know, if it's a sucking chest wound or, well, we wouldn't know that because the person's not breathing. Um, if it's a flail chest, if it's uh, every time we do a chest compression, a lot of blood comes out. Listen, basic life support is basic life support. It is compressions that are giving about 25% maximum of what the body needs in oxygen circulation. It is not going to make or break the survival necessarily in and of itself. We're hoping that it's buying brain cell time, heart cell time, and all other vascular organs. We're buying time so that we can get this person in the ambulance, get them to the hospital, get them into surgery, crack the chest and see why they're bleeding, see what, why they're in cardiac arrest. Fix those things while we're circulating oxygenated blood in hopes to save this person's life. So it's gonna be vital that we recognize that there's a risk here. We need to make sure we have our personal protective equipment on, um, as opposed to someone who has no trauma and they're just on the floor, they went into cardiac arrest, there's no body fluids. You know, um, gloves are always a great idea, but if you didn't have them and there wasn't any body fluids, it's pretty safe to say there wouldn't be any risk of infection. Just the opposite, when you have a blood, when you have blood coming from the chest and we're doing chest compressions. So gloves and a CPR shield with a one-way valve is gonna be vital, and we're going to want to activate EMS as soon as possible. Again, tap for responsiveness. If no responsiveness, if no signs of life, if you're a lay person, if no breathing, no pulse in a professional rescuer, we're going to go right into chest compressions following the regular standards, and we're going to do that until an AED and help arrives. Good question. Hope this helps. Go forth and rescue. Until next time, this is Roy on Rescue. We'll see you. Bye-bye.